The grunge explosion of the early 90s was responsible for the creation of some of the most influential, incendiary and iconic acts in rock music. Managing to endure the storm that saw many fall by the wayside, Pearl Jam, fronted by the darkly charismatic Eddie Vedder, bucked the mainstream trend and succeeded to be recognized as much more than just a representation of the movement from which they emerged. With their intense sound, haunting lyrics and raw aggression, they have transcended the grunge scene to cement their place as one of America's greatest rock bands. Pearl Jam's particular genius and their particular burden was to come along at a time when they could charge forward and summarize the past at the same moment. And believe me, they were tarred and feathered by punk rock kids for actually caring about how music sounded. This sort of goes back to maybe the, the grunge tag, what that was Pearl Jam even grunge at all. And you know, now I just think of it as sort of vintage rock and roll, you know, it's much more of a kin to the Stones and you know the Beatles and Jeff Beck and you know, all those cream and all that stuff, which is that's their, their heroes too. So, you know, if they're the ones holding the, the the torch for a good old honest rock and roll, you know, I think they've certainly helped maintain that standard of, you know, honesty. They have definitely found this place where they are tremendously well respected. There's probably no band in America who is more respected by fans and by other musicians, certainly, than Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam is one of the most important bands of the last two decades in American music. You know, there were a number of bands that came out of Seattle in the 90s, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, and Pearl Jam. What's remarkable about Pearl Jam is 20 some years after their beginning, they're still around. And in fact, of all those bands that began in that, that era, they're the only band that's still around. They combine a lot of elements that are appealing to the American people. We've got the classic rock influences, there's guitar solos, and yet at the same time, you've got the, the great lyrics and the poetic side of a sort of a, a Dylan or a Springsteen with Eddie bringing that to the table. They've never sold out, they've never used media tricks. Um, there's, there's been a bit of mystery about the band, and they've continued to tour and play live, and you know, people will always be looking to see what this band are gonna do next. Eddie Vedder was a long way from his native Evanston, Illinois, when he joined forces with Stone Gossard, Jeff Ament, Mike McCready, and Dave Crewson in Seattle to form Pearl Jam in 1990. As just another band from a scene that had been slowly building in the Pacific Northwest towards the end of the 80s that would come to be known as grunge, Pearl Jam were one of many acts fighting to be heard amongst the feedback scream of the Seattle sound. They would go on to spearhead the movement, along with fellow groups such as Nirvana, Soundgarden, and Alice in Chains. The rise of the alternative generation as the decade drew to a close heralded a new approach to rock music in the region, one that threw out the glitz and glamour of LA arena rock and brought in something that was not only aware of its roots, but that felt more aggressive, nihilistic, and raw. The importance about Seattle as a scene is that it can't be seen as something that was invented out of nowhere in fall of 1991 when you had Nirvana and Soundgarden and Pearl Jam all releasing albums within the space of a few weeks of each other, essentially. It wasn't like everyone woke up one day in Seattle and said, oh, let's invent grunge. Rather, what you have is a scene that is all over the place. It's a whole bunch of people working in a particular vein that over time, the most successful, the most uh, well-known approaches will be seen to stand for the whole. Grunge was like-minded musicians who came from Seattle or the Seattle area, who valued punk rock, but they also valued very sludgy, heavy, hard rock from the 70s. So if you took that punk ethos and crossed it with Black Sabbath, you'd have something like grunge. In the late 80s, the music scene in Seattle was extremely quiet, backwater. No band had any chance of breaking out of here, it felt like at that point, and getting success anywhere beyond the Pacific Northwest. 
at that time, playing to 100 people was kind of what the big time was. Nobody thought that there was a chance for success beyond that small, sleepy, quiet club scene. I think as a result, people began to think of recording records as kind of the, the goal. And those records did better than anyone expected. It was the success of the records made by the bands of Seattle that made the Seattle music scene. Drawing influences from hardcore punk and metal, as well as indie rock, the movement slowly built, and with it, so did the industry around the bands. 